Hello to everybody joining us. I am Rebecca Radiz with Post Planner, and I am excited to have another team member from Post Planner here with me today, Henry. Henry, how are you? Hey, how are you, Rebecca? I am doing terrific, and Henry is here to talk us through the who, what, how, every detail about Facebook Instant Articles because he has been there, done that. He has spent the last several months uh, deeply, deeply enmeshed within the entire process as we've been setting them up here, uh, really figuring out how we were going to use them as a team. Uh, and he wrote an epic blog post, which we'll be sharing with you as well, uh, about just every teeny tiny detail you've ever wanted to know about using Facebook Instant Articles within your business. And Henry, I, I, I want to brag on you just a little bit because you have such a cool background and you are just so incredibly talented, you know, so much more than what we're just going to talk about here within Facebook Instant Articles today. But we've been working together for quite some time and uh, Henry is the uh, marketing solutions leader at Post Planner. Um, and he, when he's not busy designing or programming, which I think probably takes up the majority of your time, um, you are quite the uh, the traveler. I see you jet setting all over. Yeah. I know you really enjoy photography, and so traveling is probably a little bit of an outlet for you. And Henry is based in Costa Rica, so I feel like I need to, you know, instead of Henry Arroyo, it's Henry Arroyo. I gotta roll my roll my R's, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So thanks again for putting together this blog post, first of all, and then uh, joining us here today and sharing with us all that you've learned uh, and really helping people understand how they can take advantage of Facebook Instant Articles. I think there's been a lot of confusion around them, a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of fear too. I see uh, a lot of publishers, a lot of bloggers, a lot of marketers wondering, is this good for me? Is this bad for me? Is this a direction I want to head? So I think these are all really good things for us to talk about today. and. Allay some of those fears uh, with the facts, which I know you have a lot of those, uh, and then just talk a little bit about uh, the pros and cons as well before we dive into the actual how to get these set up. So uh, Facebook Instant Articles, and you correct me if I'm wrong uh, on any of this, they launched in spring of 2015, but launched to just kind of a beta group, uh, BuzzFeed, New York Times, National Geographic, were all a part of that and we got to see uh, kind of their progression as they used those over a short period of time and then they launched, what was it, April of 2016 to the rest of us? Correct, yeah, April okay. is the day they open okay. up to all publishers. Okay, yeah, so it, it's a mobile experience. Um, it really enhances, I would say, the experience by providing quicker load times. Uh, without the hassle of having to click out to the website. So maybe start us off there and kind of walk us through what exactly are Facebook articles. Yeah, perfect. Thank you very much for the introduction, Rebecca. Um, so let me just um, let me just switch the camera to use this one. Technology. <laughs> There's so much of it. I just love it. <laughs> All right. All right. I'll be I'll be using this screen also to make uh, annotations, but you can still see me here. Um, Perfect. So how it all started? Like nowadays, we cannot argue that smartphones play a really important role on daily tasks, like uh, including browsing the web. Uh, and the fact that you can access internet wherever you are is just very convenient now. Uh, you are no longer attached to a computer to do it. So, um, and as every day passes, uh, we are demanding better and faster sites and easier to use. Uh, we are getting really picky about loading times. And this is really important because according to Kismetrics, 
47% uh, of consumers is, expect a web page to load in two seconds or less. And 40% 40 40 of people uh, abandon a website that takes more than three seconds to load. Uh, I know it sounds like a stretch, but I mean, if you really think about it, at least from my experience, whenever I'm browsing uh, the web and, um, I don't know, like reading a news site, for example, uh, let's say on Facebook, and I click on an article and it takes me to the website, uh, if it takes like three, four seconds to load, it really feels like forever. And sometimes I just say like, yeah, it's not worth it, Let, uh, let's close it, let's go back. So. Uh, it's really important to notice that in mobile, every second counts. Um, and, you know, like uh, websites and publishers and marketers are doing uh, the best they can to have really mobile friendly websites. You know, like they can um, make images uh, smaller in size to load faster, make, make the website load faster in general. Um, so Facebook noticed that. And so they created this feature, uh, and they call it Instant Articles, uh, which is basically allow brands to publish articles that load incredibly fast. Uh, as you said, uh, it was launched uh, last year, but it was not till April this year when they opened it, opened it up to all publishers. Um, so, uh, but how, how do we know what makes an instant article an instant article? You know, like what's the difference between a regular post on Facebook and a post uh, labeled as instant article? So let me show you here my iPhone. Um, yeah, I think that was one of the most confusing parts to me initially. Was wait a second, how can I even tell? Besides the load times, like you said. Yeah. Yeah. So I have I have my iPhone here. Um, you can see maybe here, which is. Uh, yep. Yep. So, and let me just put here. Okay. So w whenever you are like, this is post banner website, uh, Facebook page, and if you notice here, this little icon here, like a light lining icon, uh, this is what uh, identifies an article. A, a post in Facebook as an instant article, um, as opposed to, for example, this one here. You see, there's no lining icon. So that's that's the first thing to notice when you want to identify if an article is, uh, like if a blog, if a post is a, an instant article. Um, so according to Facebook, uh, instant articles should load 10 times faster than a standard web article. Uh, you can see here, this is the instant articles um, page uh, from Facebook. Uh, and they may mention here 10 times faster than a standard mobile web article. Um, so uh, people is like, can we, can we test it? Is there any way we can compare it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so I'm going to open this uh, article. Uh, I'm going to click the instant article from our page, and boom, loaded. Mm, we have the wow. full article there. Uh, and it is pretty beautiful layout, and, and it loaded instantly. Um, let me go back and compare that to a regular blog post that will redirect to our page. It's loading. Loading, loading, and then you have it. And that was about seven, seven seconds I counted. I will, I will say so. Um, yeah. It is light and day difference. Um, oh yeah. And even our website is really uh, optimized for for mobile, but the difference between instant article and a non-instant article, it is like no. I I think no matter how fast you make a site, I don't think it will beat the load time of an instant article. No matter what you do, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we yeah. will see why. Uh, there's a reason uh, why. Um, and I will say, like, the key ingredient that Facebook is adding to make these articles load, load really fast um, is the a strict formatted markup that they, they, that they make you uh, create. With, with markup, I mean the, the code 
you know, like the tags and like how the web, like a, like every page ha has a markup uh, with right. tags, you know, like divs, paragraph, um, and all that code that creates a website. Uh, Facebook is really strict with that. Um, so you cannot use, you know, like your regular site on an instant article. You have limited tags that you can use and really basic structure and and you cannot get out of that rigid structure uh, in order to keep the consistency and the performance and the faster loading times. Um, so that's that's basically uh, what. What? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, obviously, based off of load time, and we've had a couple of questions about, uh, is this just for mobile? And yes, this is uh, created for mobile users, so you're just going to see it on your mobile device. Um, and it's, it's a, really about creating a better user experience. Um, there's pros and cons, obviously, to that. You know, first thought that comes to my mind, Henry, is, uh, the pro is the fact that uh, we possibly get more interaction, more engagement, because our articles are loading faster, we're keeping people right there on our Facebook page, but that could also be looked at as a con too, right? Where uh, a lot of people are concerned that the traffic isn't necessarily moving over to their website, that they're staying right there on Facebook. So talk, talk a little bit about the pros and cons and what you see the positives and possible negatives for anybody, any marketer, business owner that's looking to incorporate Facebook Instant Articles into uh, their marketing mix. What do they need to consider? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You, you're right. Um, this is a really cool feature. Uh, but people need to weigh in, you know, like the advantages and disadvantages to see if it's like a fit for the needs, right? Um, so, it, in, on the positive side, uh, the advantages. Uh, well, the first one that we just saw is the instant, uh, like the fast loading time. Um, it is really instant, as they say, uh, and. And yeah, when, whenever whenever I browse a website, uh, Facebook page, sorry, and I see the icon, I just I I don't I don't know if it's now unconsciously or not, but I feel like I can click on the article and go back really fast. So I I don't mind uh, taking a quick scan to the article uh, as opposed to a regular article. Um, so that's that's the first uh, really positive uh, advantage. But um, there's also a good advantage, which is the great user experience and interactive content that you can do with instant articles. Um, if, we, if we can go back to the, to the article itself, uh, you can see like it is really uh, beautiful to navigate and it, it allows uh, some customization. It is limited, uh, I have to be honest, it's really limited on what you can do uh, design-wise, uh, but you can brand it and, and you can have really cool features within the instant articles, um, which I'm not going to go into much detail here because we are uh, creating a blog post, actually, as we speak, uh, about how all the different elements that the instant article itself have, because it is a uh, it is huge. Um, <laughs> That's a webinar in and of itself. Yeah, right? exactly. This is <laughs> yeah. part two of the of the yeah, absolutely. Of the so yeah, it's a beautiful layout, and for example, um, you can add uh, Twitter integration and like a regular page. And for example, here you can click on an image, and you can scroll it just by like just moving the tilt in the iPhone, and you can like I don't need to scroll or pinch in to zoom in, you know, like with the two fingers and and like a regular web page. So um, we, we will go into much detail uh, on the part two about, about it. Um, so let's continue with the positive side of the instant articles. Um, as you said, uh, there's better engagement uh, because uh, people will stay on, the, on, the, on Facebook. Uh, they won't, like, 
uh, Facebook said that instant articles generate like 20% more clicks and 70% less likely to be abandoned due to the fasting loading times. Um, and they also said that Facebook said that uh, they won the algorithm won favor of inst instant articles. So there's no difference. Uh, right. Like uh, there's no priority to instant articles in that in that sense, so that's positive. Which um, is kind of crazy, don't you think? I, I, you have to imagine that's going to change eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I I will say like that's they should favor it because it is a better user experience in general. Um, an, another positive thing is that you can have ads. Um, and Facebook thing thought on publisher and marketers and that because uh, you can have two options to add ads. Uh, you can, add, as a company, have your own clients and your own ads and keep 100% of the revenue. Um, or you can even let Facebook handle the ads. Uh, they have like this uh, tool that it's called the Facebook Audience Network. And when Facebook handles the ads, uh, you keep 70% 70 70% of the revenue. So that's that's a positive thing uh, if people want to make like an extra income there, um, which uh, it, it is good in my opinion. Um, and you can track and measure the instant article using your preferred analytics method. Like for example, we use um, Google Analytics, and here for example. Here, this is the one that we can track as uh, instant articles. We make like the specific tag uh, keyword to add the dimension of uh, social instant articles. So we can differentiate and we can start testing because it is really, it is recent, you know, instant articles. Uh, it's been on the, on the public uh, really a few months. Um, so people are still testing, we are still testing. And we'll, we will see uh, as the days go by and months go by uh, how we can keep improving uh, all the metrics. Absolutely. And, and let me just back up real quick um, and make sure that we're all clear. So what you're saying is that we can clearly see what the difference is between uh, something that we've, paid, we've posted uh, through a Facebook Instant Article as opposed to uh, a link that's driving people back over to our website so that we're able to start determining, A, is this really working for us? Um, what are those actions that people are taking? Uh, and making sure that we're still getting a benefit out of utilizing this tool, especially within our Facebook marketing. Correct. Um, and yeah, and, and Facebook did that and allowed that uh, because here comes like the first negative side of instant articles. Uh, and it's the fact that when you click on the instant article on the on the on Facebook, it actually stays on Facebook. It never leaves Facebook. Like what you're seeing here, it's this is living within Facebook. It is not our website. Um, and and that's that, that that was like a like the biggest drawback for for publishers because. Um, with your site, whenever you go to your site, uh, you can have all kind of um, ways or st any strategy that you want to engage users. You know, like a like a side a sidebar. Uh, you know, like you have the menu. You have they are on your site, and you can keep them in your site. Uh, but with instant articles, uh, you are in Facebook, so you should you you start. Forget forgetting about you know like having a sidebar, having you know like a footer or something or more a specific footer like we have here, where we have for example you know like a, like a form where we can catch users Capture, uh, to, to right. subscribe yeah and you know like all kind of uh, all kind of ways and strategies to catch the user. Um, so that, that that was a that, that's a really negative side. Uh, so Facebook um, wanted to give you the ability to track uh, 
how it is performing by allowing your analytics to live in the in the instant article itself. So you can differentiate, as you mentioned, uh, which ones, what, what what percent of the traffic is coming from the site, or which one is from the instant article itself. Uh, and obviously that can hurt a little bit the SEO, as you mentioned, because as 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 I said, like your visitor your visitors won't be directly coming to your site. So uh, it, you definitely you have, need yeah. a way to capture them. Exactly. Right. Um, yeah, and I, I know that was something we talked about a lot at the very beginning. Uh, was you know what are those calls to action going to look like? How are you know we going to continue to take advantage of the options like you're showing here that we have and we all have within our own website? Uh, and still be able to uh, maximize that on Facebook. And the good news is, is Facebook has come out with a lot of different ways with, through customization, um, through ads, calls mm -hmm. to action, that we can add a lot of those features so that in my opinion, it's you know it's a win-win there where we get our content in front of uh, our audience on Facebook, but provide a much better experience for them, uh, and still we're able to provide additional resources. So maybe it's an ebook or an infographic, or maybe it's a webinar that you know your business is hosting that you want to be able to direct people over to that content. The good news is you can still do that. Yeah, yeah we, we, we've been testing them. For example, um, here at the end of this article, for example, um, on the instant article, we have our CTA. This one right here. Um, yeah. This is one of our CTAs. And it is specifically aimed for instant articles. Uh, it's a little bit different from the from the one on the, on the side. I mean, it's the same design and everything, but um, yeah. Its code is different, so we can track also how many people are clicking through this CTA right here. That particular CTA, as Perfect. opposed to the CTA on the blog post, so that we can clearly see what type of traffic we're getting off of both of those. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah, that's that's the first disadvantage of instant articles. Uh, you know, like the content living on Facebook itself. Um, but there are also uh, some negative aspects uh, which might make people reluctant to use instant articles. And that's um, the technical side. Um, well, before you can publish an instant article, Facebook also needs to approve you. And the process right. can be really difficult and a real pain. Um, <laughs> As you, you found out. <laughs> yeah. Especially, especially with sites that are not using WordPress. With WordPress, it is not that complicated, uh, to be honest. But if you're not using WordPress or um, and you're using another CMS that is not uh, like supported completely by instant articles, then it can get uh, a real pain. Uh, it can yeah. be a real pain. Um, Which is exactly why we asked you here, because <laughs> you have simplified the entire process for us <laughs> and what we decided to do since uh, yeah we are not hosted on WordPress um, but I know that the majority of people that are going to be going through this process probably are yeah uh, and the good news is is that it is a little bit easier because there are plugins and you're going to show us all of that um, how to go through that process a lot less painful than potentially if you're on another CRM like you said could be um, but I think there's enormous value uh, it, you know me the the main takeaway for Facebook instant articles is uh, it, it's something really worth your time to test wouldn't you agree yeah, yeah totally like uh Especially if you're if you're using WordPress, like it is a no-brainer for me. Like if you're using WordPress, mm -hmm. you should be using instant articles. Uh, but even if you are not using uh, WordPress, uh, I think it's worth uh, the time and the investment. Uh, especially because you might need uh, if you're not using WordPress, you might need the help of a developer for sure uh, to make it easier um, and to make it work. Yeah. So. Um, 
So you ready to dive in and kind yeah. of walk us through how to set this up exactly. from the beginning to end? <laughs> yeah, let's go. So um, I have here, I created, um, right here, I have created a demo, like a dummy uh, Facebook page just to test the instant articles. Uh, mm -hmm. There's nothing here. Um, if we go to the, like this is, this menu that you have here uh, is what every admin can see. Um, so if you go to the publishing tools um, tab, here you have like a side menu and here should be instant articles, but it is not. Why it's not? Because instant articles uh, is not there by default. Uh, you have to sign up first, and that's the first step that you have to do. You have to sign up for instant articles. Um, so you just go to the page, facebook.com instant articles sign up. Uh, the link is on the blog post. Uh, yeah, and we'll share, we'll share all of these. Yeah, mm -hmm. and here, just refresh just in case. Let me see if you can see clearly. So here are like the pages I am, I admin, I am an admin. So here is my instant articles test. Uh, I'm gonna click here and proceed with the uh, access instant article tools. And that's it. I'm, I have now access to the publishing tools for instant articles. So let's go and see how it looks like. So you see here, we have now like the tab for instant articles. This is the really, this, is, this tab is really important because this is where you track all the instant articles, and if there's a problem with them, you can uh, take a look here. Um, even Facebook had, has its own analytics for it, so um, you can, this is really important place to, to constantly check. Um, so if we go to the configuration, we have here like the initial setup, uh, and it is a very detailed uh, steps of what you need to do. They really give you a checklist, don't they? That yeah. walks you through step by step everything yeah. you need to do. Yeah, and you can check also here like all the documentation uh, for instant articles. It can get sometimes very technical and in general, uh, sometimes uh, for maybe some for some people a little bit hard to digest, uh, but it's really complete. Um, so it's something to take a look uh, if you have a chance. Um, yeah, and I would I would also say that, uh, yeah, warning disclaimer that instant articles isn't for the faint of heart, right? It's uh, <laughs> it, it can be a little technically challenging, um, but what you did in your blog post uh, that is the kind of complementary piece to what we're talking about here today. Uh, is you stripped away all of that, you know, technical <laughs> mumbo jumbo that <laughs> kind of leaves your head spinning, and you made it super simple. Um, so for anybody watching, uh, we are giving you the exact step by step in Henry's article on do this, do this, do this. So if this feels totally overwhelming to you, if you're looking at the initial setup, or you know step one and step two, and you're thinking, no way, I'm not going to be able to do this, uh, he breaks it all down very thoroughly uh, for you in layman's terms. And uh, you also at some point say, okay, now if you've had some you know technical challenges, now is the time to get your developer involved. So you're very clear about that too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, so let's go. I also created, um, I have a website, uh, like a really, again, also like a dummy test. Uh, there's nothing here. I just installed WordPress. Uh, so you can see like from scratch uh, what you need to do. So uh, first thing is that you can, you have a plugin uh, that is, like the official one from Facebook. Uh, and and you, you have to be careful here because um, plugins can, can get, like this is really recent, right? And I remember I tried the, the first version of this plugin and it was a mess. Like it really was uh, really buggy. Uh, and even though I think they have, they are on version three right now, um, it is way better than, the first version, but uh, but still, 
I recommend whenever you post uh, an article, as instant article, to double check it uh, to see if everything um, looks good, uh, if everything broke or something to check like that. We will we will see like an example of something that happened to us, um, um, and you have to be really careful uh, about it and double check everything. Uh, so. So are there, is there a specific plugin that you've tested at this point that you're feeling comfortable with that you would recommend? Yeah, I, I, will, I will go with the one that Facebook. Uh, I think there are a few uh, plugins out there already. Um, I honestly haven't tried them all. Um, I tried the Facebook Instant Article, the FB Instant Article. Um, actually, I knew. And it is the one that Facebook, it's, it's like the official one. Okay. Instant article. So FB instant articles. Yeah. And you should try all the other one and see how they how they perform. So you see like the ratings are really, you know, mixed. Mm, very you know, poor. Uh, yeah. yeah. But I believe uh, a lot of them were because of the first versions. So um, mm. uh, let's see let's see if I can install it from here because I think my server I have some limitations on my server here. Uh, otherwise, I will just upload the plugin. Um, yeah, let me return to plugin. Uh, I won't. I won't be able to install it directly because uh, I have uh, some security restrictions on uh, on this page on this server. So this is like the the alternative way of installing a plugin. You know, to upload that zip. I already sure. have it downloaded. Um, so you can either search for it, the FB Instant Articles, or as you're doing, you can always Google it, you can download it, and then upload it right into WordPress. Yeah, correct. Or the third one is back to FTP uh, to upload the files directly. Yeah, and again, um, so, we've got the link. We've got the link for this. So I yeah. don't want everybody to think that they've got to frantically be you know, <laughs> writing this stuff down. Yeah, so I already installed it, so now I just click Activate Plugin, and we will see here the Instant Articles menu. So let's click on it, and it is really, um, actually, this is, let me update this because there was a test I did. Okay, so here you, this, you will see this, like uh, you need to add like an app ID and an app secret. Um, and where do I get this app ID and app secret? Like here is the instructions, and you just need to have like a, a Facebook uh, app developer. And if we click here, it will take us to Facebook for developers. Uh, it, it, it might look a little bit scary, but it is not. You just have to add a new app here. And let's say let's put website. And let's choose a name, um, instant article test. So we create the app ID. Is this a test version? No. Uh, the contact email, I will put my email here. And category, I will use app for pages. So the category is going to be dependent on their yeah. page, though, right? Yeah, no, actually, yeah, this is app for pages because this is um, Actually, a connection. This is going to be like the bridge between the, web, the WordPress site and the Facebook itself. Um, so let's create the Apple ID and just uh, see. Oh, it shows a flower. <laughs> Show you. Just to prove that I'm not a robot. <laughs> <laughs> So um, tell us about your site. I'm just, I'm just going to grab the URL of the site that I'm testing. Um, and yeah, you can, you can just skip the, the rest of the. All that scary JavaScript? Yeah. <laughs> you can just skip that, because uh, the plugin is actually going to do everything for us. Got it. OK. So I already set up. And I have the app ID here and the app secret uh, to require fields that the plugin is asking me. Uh, but there's one step we have to do first. Uh, and here in app review, uh, we have to make it public. Um, mm. 
So you just click here to make it public, confirm. The time, and, yes. Okay. <laughs> and let's go back to the dashboard and let's copy the app ID. Just paste it here. And here, let's show the app secret. Uh, let's copy this one. Just paste it here. Let's click next. Um, and uh, okay, so the plugin is uh, ready, but it needs to log into the Facebook. Uh, we need to uh, authorize it. Yeah, authorize it. Um, and yeah, I will receive continuous Henry. So you want to continue through all of those steps, and it's you're basically authorizing the plugin. Correct. Uh, and so don't feel uncomfortable that you're saying yes and <laughs> uh, yeah. working through those steps. Yeah, yeah, because we need we need the plugin to have access to the Facebook because once you publish a blog post on your WordPress site, it will automatically uh, synchronize with Facebook and say like, hey, Facebook, we have a new blog post. This is going to be an instant article. Uh, and that's pretty cool. We will see the example uh, in a few. So, okay, we log in with Facebook, and we have here the pages that I can post to, like the pages I am admin. So mm -hmm. is that instant articles test? Let's click next. And boom, we are success. Your instant articles plugin have been activated. Um, yeah, look how look how simple that is in yeah. comparison, yeah, to a, an entire manual setup. So it's exciting to see how accessible Instant Articles are. I know you said that there were some real challenges with uh, the first and maybe even second version of some of these plugins, yeah. but now they seem to be pretty stable. They've worked through the bugs, uh, and exciting to see how simple. You know, there's several steps, but in comparison to what you went through several months ago, the process yeah. is simplified immensely. Yeah, it's, it, it is really simple. And and again, if you want to try another plugin, uh, just be careful as with every other plugin with WordPress, all right? Um, make sure it's from a really good, uh, uh, from a good source. Uh, because you know we are granting access to Facebook and your site, so it is like uh, just be careful. Like uh, do your research, and if the reviews are also really good, uh, why not try it, right? Um, so let's go back to the Facebook page. Um, let's refresh here. And here on the Instant Articles menu. Um, so now that just popped up, right? That wasn't there before. Yeah, yeah, exactly. When when we created that, when we synchronized that. So what's next? Um, we have, um, we have. Let me just check if the URL is already claimed. Um, I think that the the plugin does it automatically. On your site. Um, let me just check real quick here. Okay. Okay, I'm, I'm going to claim the site here um, before we, you can start publishing uh, as instant article. You have to connect your site with a Facebook page because right now. Uh, your Facebook page doesn't know where is the source of the instant articles. Um, so you just grab sense. the yeah you just grab the URL um, and right here and just paste it here where you say connect site and you just paste your URL and you have to claim it. Um, to claim it, uh, you see it is check. This is another cool thing of the plugin. The plugin adds the code automatically for us uh, because oh, otherwise nice. you will have to copy this part and paste it on the header of your ah, of your, of of your, your website. website. Yeah. But the plugin actually does all of that for you. 
Correct. So mm -hmm. if we click here, um, let's see, view page source. Save it's already clean. Here. This is like the, the, the source, the source, the page source of my mm -hmm. of my WordPress page, and here it is already added. Uh, this is the the link that the the code that you have to manually paste if you are not using the WordPress site, the WordPress plugin. Sorry. So so those that go cross-eyed when they look at that page source code <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just need to know that it's all good, right? Yeah, they, yeah, the it, plugin does it all for you. Uh huh. Yep. <laughs> Awesome. So, okay, so now we have the connection between the WordPress site and the Facebook page ready. So what's next? Before you start, you can start publishing uh, your articles, you have to be, you have to submit for review. Uh, okay. Here, this is really good news because um, when we started uh, a few months ago, uh, you had you had to submit 50 articles. Uh, so you have to have on your blog 50 articles ready to send to Facebook and say like, "Hey, these are my these are my articles. Uh, please review them." Um, Which was probably for, a big blocker for a lot of people. Oh yeah, 50 yeah, articles because, is a lot. Yeah, and 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 I'm talking about 50 articles with uh, a strict markup with a strict code. It's not like you can just grab your blog post and just send it to Facebook. No, you have to um, you have to have the strict markup ready for instant articles. The plugin does the the translation between the blog post and the article, the markup, um, instant articles markup. It does it automatically. We will see that. Um, so, so what what you're talking about is Facebook needs to review uh, a certain amount of articles off of your website before correct. you're fully approved and you're yes. ready to go and you yes. can actually post on to Facebook. And when we went through this process, this was a, you know manual for you yeah. uh, and having to go through and do this markup that you're talking about. But the beautiful thing again with the WordPress plugin is that it does all of that hard work for you, correct? Correct. And and now if we read here on the on the steps needed, uh, the submit for review, Facebook is now asking for five articles instead of fifty. Oh wow, what a huge yeah. difference. Oh yeah. And and I think a month ago they changed it, it was to ten. It was ten. Like, exactly uh, I was gonna say. Yeah. I didn't even realize that it dropped again. Yeah, they, they're probably gonna change it to one. You know, like if, if people are scared. Ah, just forget it. Yeah, they've just thrown in the towel at this point. So, all right. So, what should we do to submit an article for review? Um, let's go back to the to our page. Uh, let's go to posts, uh, and let me grab, for example, let me grab this this to text and let's say I'm gonna write a post uh, I'm gonna create a new one um, let's create a, a new post here um, and let's uh, you know like let's let's add the, the same just for so I'm going to create a post let me just check here all right um, yeah, perfect uh, I'm going to I also uh, set a feature image. So doing exactly what you typically do when you're yeah, just creating getting a blog ready. post. Mm -hmm. So just uh, just your typical. Yeah, you blog. write your blog post here, uh, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna publish it. Okay. You will see here in the bottom. Here, Facebook instant articles. Uh, it says your post was transformed into an instant articles with no warnings. That's good. That's always good because it said it means that uh, the blog post should be uh, ready. Uh, if, if we click here, what does that mean? Your article was submitted. 
so this is uh, okay. We we will see that uh, on the page. Um, but here's like the transformation that the plugin does automatically for us. So we have uh, like the text here. Uh, it has you know like the text. This is maybe a little bit complicated for most people who are not familiar with the code of the of a web page. But these are like the tags, like the paragraph tags, uh, and there's like the text, the actual text that we have here. Um, so, you know, like just three paragraphs and a link right here, transform into all of into, that into all this. <laughs> so, um, and so again, the good news is is that it just automatically did that for you. You didn't correct. have to lift a finger, no code, anything. Um, and so it, when it says it's submitting, is that pushing that over to your Facebook page or explain how that works? Yeah, so the plugin automatically sent it to the Facebook yeah, and it's going to say like, hey, there's a new blog post uh, and it's an instant article. So if we refresh our uh, Facebook page uh, and go to production articles, you can see here that we have a new one here on production articles. Um, so this is why you're saying for those publishers that are looking to, you know, possibly post quite a bit of content, move it over to Facebook, they're going to spend a lot of time within publishing tools and under instant articles. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we have we have the, the article here. Um, and if we go back to configuration, um, and try to submit for review, it says not enough articles. Uh, and there's also the, the logo missing. So uh, we, we can add like, the logo here on the styles. Um, this is like the default style that will come. Um, and we can upload the logo here. Let's try. You have a minimum size to upload your logo. And let's just add something here to. All right. Um, but just I, again, this is this part. Uh, I will go into uh, in go more into detail the, in yeah. a follow-up. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Because there's just there is a lot to customization. But the good news is, and let's just clarify this point: uh, there is a default style. So it's very simple if you're not wanting to bother or just don't have the time right now to customize. Correct. Uh, you, it, it, you're style, uh, you can just use that, that default, correct? Correct, yeah. And, and, it, and you can, uh, yeah, you have to have your logo. Like, Facebook won't let you publish unless you have branded yourself so in, and you're aware mm -hmm. that that section exists. Um, so we have that ready, and we just need five more articles and send them for review. And usually, Facebook uh, will get back to you, like, in four, five business days and say like, hey, you are ready to start publishing or no, uh, there's, we found some errors and uh, you need to fix that before we can approve you. And there's uh, also another tool that I want to show you right here, which is really good for testing the article itself. Um, and it's called uh, Pages. Uh, you can see it right here, this Pages. So the app. Facebook Pages app? Yeah, uh -huh. correct. Uh, so if we go in here, um, let me go to instant article test, and on the I'm gonna click here on the bottom right, and actually let me just probably so under the more tab there within the Facebook Pages app. Yeah. Mhm. Mm uh, it's probably not not updated yet. Ah. Let's let's try it on the on the yeah. post planner one, and here you can see the go. instant articles. And it's right there. Yeah, if you can click there. You can see all our blog posts, and you can uh, test how they look before actually publishing. Uh, and when so just to finish up, when you are ready, when you submitted your articles and Facebook approved you, um, this is. This is something really important because it, it is really confusing for some people. So let's say we have 10 articles here. If we, and we have like the status unpublished. Uh, 
by default, it's not automatically published. Um, we can configure that here to, uh, there, once you are approved, you have a button here that says uh, auto, auto, like auto publish my articles. But even if we manually click here, uh, publish, um, once you are approved, once, uh, once you click publish, people might think that, all right, once I publish it, it's gonna show in my Facebook, you know, like a post, right? But it's not. Uh, it is just going to tell Facebook that the article is ready for instant article to be live. Uh, so you just publish your blog post as the, the same way that you've been doing it uh, the whole time. Uh, you know, like going to the page and start writing the blog post. It's like the, like the description and the link to the, to the article. And once you publish as you normally do with any other article, um, it will automatically sync up and attach the instant article feature to it. So that's, uh, that's really okay. important to, to understand. Yeah. Well, and it just all depends on if you want to, I know that was a decision we made at the beginning too, if we wanted to auto-publish everything or if you wanted the control over that yeah. to determine you know, exactly when that happened. Yeah, and, and I, I, we didn't, like, I prefer not, well, it will depend, like, auto-publishing, um, I prefer to, to, you know, like, to quickly scan the, the article prior to allowing to be live. Um, mm -hmm. Let me, uh, let's say, let, let, let's say, for example, here, because this is really important also. So if I have, for example, I'm gonna I'm gonna add some code that is not correct. Probably let's see. Okay. So here, sometimes you will find this when you go to your production articles list, and you will find like an error, and then you can click on it and edit and see what the problem is. Um, Will it tell you exactly what the error is? Yeah, or sometimes. <laughs> and this is where you have to be like really careful uh, uh, about what made the article uh, give the, with the error. Let me see if, yeah, for example, uh, it should be here, like the warning. Uh, but it's because, uh, let me see, yeah, maybe because I'm not uh, allowed approved to, yet. yeah, approved yet, it's not showing like the error, but it's because I have like an empty tag here, right. so you, you cannot do that. Uh, so it, it is something like, a, something you can watch for, uh, you see, it's now fixed. Ah, uh, now um, it's gone. Yeah. So the, it seems though that that's another benefit to the plugin, is that the plugin is, sending over that clean code to Facebook over to Instant Articles. So hopefully you shouldn't have to worry about that. Yes and no, but because I, like just, just to emphasize on the part that you have to double check everything. For example, here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add, and this is a problem with markup, for example. I'm going to add a markup here on the question that mobile, for example. Mm -hmm. This is... This is all markup. It's not. Um, this is a really all type of markup that it is that shouldn't be used right now. It is like the underline, but you should do the underline differently with HTML5. So this is this is really deprecated markup. So I'm gonna update and see what happens. You see? Uh, actually, let me just check with, because I might have a rule here. Yes, let me just update this. Let's go back here. Um, all right, and see, like we, when we update, it says the mm. post was transformed into instant article with some warning. It says no rules defined for you in the context of paragraph. And if you just ignore that, let's see what happened here. 
Uh oh, let's see. Let's go back. So it does that. tell you right here before even going over there that there's an error. Yes, correct. And okay. the problem, the problem is that even though it says uh, uh, there was an error, uh, let me let's up, let's update here just to quickly see what happened. It won't show an error on instant articles because um, production articles. Yeah, what what happened? Uh, okay, so take a look here. It says there's no devices are changing. There's no and. It has stripped this part out of the instant article, um, so that's that's something you have to be aware of because the instant articles uh, trans transfer it transforms into instant articles correctly uh, with a warning, uh, but it it is correct the format, but it didn't know what to do with this u tag, so mm -hmm. it grabbed this part and just did this. You know, so that's that's why people are also like uh, uh, putting a bad review on the plugin because when the plugin doesn't know what to do with certain parts of the article itself, it just deleted. So yeah, um, okay, yeah. Well, and and I think this is where we get into uh, yes, right for sure, where you talking your articles about. Um, if this feels you know too technical, or I would highly stress that if this is not something that you need to be spending your time on within your business, depending on you know what your focus is, it's a great thing to give away, and there are tons of super talented people that can do exactly this and manage every aspect of it from the setup to uh, getting these posted to your Facebook page without all of the stress that might come in because I, I mean my goodness Henry this this took you quite some time to work through and while I know you have really you know watered it down for all of us uh, to make it super simple it doesn't mean that it's still a great use of somebody's time yeah exactly yeah you, you have again you have to wait in the, the positive and the negative side of it and, yeah. and see if you are willing to spend time or the resources of a web developer <clears throat> to start implementing this yeah, yeah, most definitely. Well, and there's, uh, a, a, you know, there, there's definitely the setup time, um, the time to go through. So you have to uh, anticipate to uh, how long it's actually going to take you before you can start using these, um, and how much time it's going to take to not only work through the setup process, get through the approval process. Uh, and then make sure that you've got somebody in place or you have the time to continuously keep up with this. So yeah. if you're going to publish them yourself, it's making sure you've got kind of that process in place where you go from your, your blog post that you've just published over to your Facebook page and you're going through and you're reviewing that uh, to determine that everything looks A-OK. -okay. Uh, before you actually get that posted to your page, so yeah, it's it, it's a process of, from every aspect of it. Yeah, and and the golden rule here is that uh, whatever time you expect it's going to take you, it's probably going to take you more. <laughs> yeah, probably a double, right? Yeah, yeah, especially yeah, so, when you're first getting started. Yeah, exactly, because it is it, it might be challenging or confusing at the beginning, uh, but once you get the uh, <clears throat> the hands on it, uh, you'll see it's really kind of a straightforward. Uh, still, uh, they're probably going to change a few things Facebook to during time because it's been really new. Um, but I believe it is a good good tool and feature that people should use. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. In fact, now that I'm looking at this, we we should have just had you uh, uh, add it to mine instead of using a test, and then yeah. I'd be. Yeah. Oh, I wouldn't have to worry about it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Dang it, I should have been sneakier. <laughs> sure, I'll volunteer for you to use my website. 
<laughs> but yeah, I think I think the overall takeaway here is uh, don't be afraid of Facebook instant articles. Don't look at them, you know, from that friend or foe perspective with uh, Facebook. Um, I, I think it's a terrific tool to test out. I think it's a, a you know, from a, a user experience point of view, it's fantastic. Keeping people on your Facebook page longer, reading through your content longer, uh, and the fact that now we have the ability to add in all these different ways for them to take action off of our content. So not just clicking through the post, but those calls to actions like like you were sharing. Uh, I think we have a lot of opportunity here as marketers. Yeah, definitely agree. Yeah, it's exciting, um, but it's definitely evolving. As you just shared with how many articles we have to submit, you know, it started at 50, it went down to 10, now it's down to five. Mm -hmm. Uh, so things will continue to shift and to change, uh, and certainly I, I'm I guaranteed Facebook has more up its sleeve as to you know what they're going to be offering to us in availability. But it's a great place, a great place to get started. Um, let's uh, transition if we can real quick here because we're coming up pretty close to uh, the end of our time together, the end of our hour, but we have a couple of good questions that um, I'd like us to address and these are Post Planner specific. Uh, so within Post Planner we have what's called a share bar where you can brand your content uh, and Kaylin is asking can I use my share bar with instant articles? Mm, that's a that's a really good question. Um, it is, and I I would think I, I was kind of thinking this through with the pros and the cons, and I would say yes, you could because you could use the uh, the URL for that specific instant article. But why would you want to do that? Because not everybody's going to be accessing your content on mobile. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that's actually a really really good question. Uh, I haven't tried. Uh, and my first thought would be uh, that you can't because uh, the chair bar has like a URL with, uh, with a custom domain first and then you have like uh -huh. a site embedding that in, in there. So you are actually watching, uh, even though you are on your site, it is embedded on your chair bar. Um, so it's not your actual site. And again, Facebook Instant Article is not pointing to your site, but instead instead to the Facebook itself, like the like the Facebook markup. Uh, so I will say no, uh, but I, that's something I would well, I want to test. Yeah, and I think it's a good thing to test, but truthfully, in my opinion, I'm not sure why you'd ever want to do it because yeah. you're pointing away from your website. Um, and I, I mean, I guess if you were just sending them to Facebook, yes, and maybe I'm thinking, yeah. you know, tweeting it out. And why would you want to do that? Because then you're yeah, exactly. Creating a potential mobile situation for people that aren't accessing on on mobile. So I think it's a good thing to test. Let's give it a try, Henry, and see what we come up with and see if it makes sense. Yeah, and, and especially because uh, when, whenever you share content that is not yours, uh, those are not going to be instant articles uh, for you unless the source have that as an instant article themselves. And that's a great point because somebody had asked that question as well, um, and that was post planner specific too about if they're sharing other people's content, are they automatically converted to instant no. articles? And no, that's, yeah. not the that's case. a definite no because we claim our site. You know that you we put in here uh, the claim where we said this is our site. Um, mm -hmm. Let's skip here. So everybody has to claim their own site. Correct. So it's Correct. totally dependent on whether or not that yeah. that writer has or that that blogger has claimed their site and is using instant articles. Correct. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely no. Um, and then Kaylin asked, uh, "Can I use the Post Planner Curate tool to curate my own instant articles?" And I would think that yes, you could just pull those in just like any other article. 
Yeah, remember remember that the instant article doesn't live by itself, right? Uh, it lives, it has to have a source and the source is your website. Like you cannot have, uh, like you cannot have a post as an instant article itself uh, without your blog post. You have to have like the source, uh, which is your site. Um, so yeah, and Post Planner, uh, you can curate your own content, so. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and then this would go hand in hand, uh, you know, with the share bar, but also with you always being really clear on what your call to action is. So where you're looking to drive people, what you're looking to achieve. And I think that's something with both those questions, you really have to think through. You know, are you looking to use these instant articles outside of Facebook? Are you looking to use them to generate uh, interaction or engagement somewhere else? Um, and, and so I think you really have to think about how instant articles are working within your marketing strategy and what your whole yeah. goal is for them. Yeah, and, and remember that Facebook instant articles lives only on Facebook, right? And right. only on mobile. So yep. uh, like if you access the Facebook page on your desktop, you are not going to see any instant articles because that's only for mobile. It's just like uh, Google Lamp, right? Correct, so, yeah. yeah. Same experience. Yeah, and that's that's another blog post because Google Amp is like a like their version of this uh, using yes. the, uh, Google Search. Yes, so, please, please write yeah. that, <laughs> and then we'll we'll do a, another one of these uh, live webinars walking through it because I think that's that's another confusing aspect for people is how to prepare for that and how to how to integrate uh, Google's version of Facebook Instant Articles because you can do both. Which is a correct whole yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, it, it is. You have like a set of tools, and you use the best uh, out of it to make the user experience better. You know, like we are helping the user here, uh, mm -hmm. making the faster website load on mobile, for example. Uh, yeah. So you might think, yeah, yeah, it's not worth it for me as a publisher, but think about the, your users, uh, like like the engagement and the user experience and 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 you have to weigh that also. So. Absolutely. Well, Henry, oh my goodness, thank you so much. You are just a wealth of information. Every time I listen to you, my mind is blown just a little bit more. So Thank you for walking us through all of that, for writing that epic post, uh, of which we'll be sharing. And yes, to everybody that uh, uh, signed up and joined us here today, we will be getting you the replay along with the link to that blog post. So as I said at the beginning, you know, no scribbling, no taking notes. Uh, <laughs> we've got everything laid out for you. And then uh, we are always available to you. If you need anything, feel free to uh, ping us on Facebook. You can find us on Twitter. Um, we're here to answer answer your questions for you and not leave you hanging when it comes to Facebook and these instant articles because they can be just a little bit confusing. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, you go and enjoy the rest of your day in beautiful Costa Rica. Henry, we always feel so sorry for you every time we talk to you. And we say, how's that weather? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't tell us. <laughs> always sunny here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. I guess I can't complain. I'm in L.A., so wham, right? <laughs> Poor Leanne, who's always manning all of our comments, is in Boston. Nice right now, but not always the case. <laughs> all right. So uh, take care, Henry. Thanks again. And we look forward to seeing all of you back here for our next live event, uh, which will be, we've got one coming up next week. So, or actually this Thursday, I'm sorry. Um, and so just uh, hop onto our Facebook page for all of the, the details, facebook.com forward slash post planner. And we will see you back here. Uh, live. So thanks to everybody for joining us. Take care.